to go through and give you a tutorial on how to make my artisan mold bread. Um, it's adapted, my recipe is adapted from the artisan bread in less than five minutes a day. Um, and it's also in my book, Pioneering Today, um, that has over 40 recipes, traditional recipes in here, and this is just one of them. So the premise of the bread is it takes less than five active minutes a day to have homemade fresh bread. It only has five ingredients in it, and I've been baking this bread for a, a year now since I bought bread in the store. Um, I calculated out the cost when you buy your ingredients in bulk, and it ends up being about 30 cents a loaf, which is very economical. So it's a no-need bread, which is great, and you don't need a bread machine. So we're going to start out with our bowl here, and I've got the yeast and salt in there already. And it's one and a half tablespoons yeast and one and a half tablespoons salt. Um, with your yeast, when you buy it in bulk, store it in the fridge, and it will stay fresher longer, and it will activate better for you. So we're going to take three cups of lukewarm water, just run warm water from the tap, check it on the inside of your wrist. If it's too hot, um, it'll kill the yeast. If it's too cold, it won't activate. So it's lukewarm. Just kind of get it. So we're going to pour our three cups in over the yeast and the salt. So we're going to pour that over there, and... We always want to use a plastic or wooden or glass bowl. Never use metal when you're using anything with yeast. Metal um, does not retain the heat and you need to keep the heat when it rises. It cools off much too quickly and the yeast won't, um, the bread won't rise. So don't ever use metal. So we're just going to kind of swirl it around here a little bit. It doesn't really matter if the yeast dissolves quite all the way because then we um, stir in the flour and let it rise. It rise, excuse me, it will. So we're just going to stir this up here. And it's already starting to get bubbly, which is great. So I'm going to show you the real upstate shot. So it's already getting bubbly. So we're going to let that sit for about 8 to 10 minutes. Um, so that's how quick it is to do this part. And then next, we'll just add the flour and the vinegar. So for 8 to 10 minutes, go do what else you need to do. Add in our fourth ingredient, which is vinegar, and this is the part where I changed from the original um, recipe and, and adapted it and get my own. So we're going to add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, or you can use regular white vinegar as well. Um, and the reason we're going to add vinegar is it adds a little bit of a natural preservative uh, to our bread, because it doesn't have any preservatives in it, which is good, um, helps keep it fresher a little bit longer. And in a no-knead bread, when you knead bread, it helps the gluten, which is what gives you that nice soft, fluffy, milk in the mouth texture in bread. So no new breads are great on time saving, um, but the vinegar helps the gluten, the ends are not needing, so it gives you a better texture and a little bit better flavor in my opinion. So that's um, what I do. So next we're going to add six and a half cups of flour. Now you can use whatever kind of flour you want. Today I'm just using all regular purpose traditional white flour. Um, if you want to do wheat, you can definitely do wheat flour. Um, we can make a very dense bread, especially because this is no need. So if you're going to use wheat flour, um, I experienced uh, this from some different experiences where I thought was up with the wheat flour. So if you're going to do wheat flour, I recommend doing the finely ground pastry wheat flour and mixing it. Um, I do four cups of wheat flour, two cups of white flour, and then if you're using wheat flour, you want to do half a cup of vital wheat gluten and this is going to open up the texture of the wheat when it bakes you make it that really dense and it's just going to give it a much better flavor and you can get vital wheat gluten um, in bulk at health food stores um fred meyers in their natural organic section has some so just check around and you should be able to find it no problem so when we're measuring out our flour i'm going to give you a little picture i already have six cups in here but we need six and a half cups flour so we're going to use the dip method so just dip into the flour and level it off with a spoon. I see the hand of the spoon I'm spoon with. And I'm going to dump it in. So measure out your six and a half cups flour that way. And then we're going to dump it all into our big bowl here. And I dump it all in at once. And dump it in. Okay, so we've got our flour in there with all of that. And then we just stir it up. And we, I just stir it until it's combined. You don't have to worry about I just stir it all until it's combined. You don't have to worry about getting it really, really good. And this is going to be a wet flour, um, what we call it, because after we let it rise for the first time, then we're going to store it in a fridge. And because it's so wet, it needs to be cold for you to handle it. 
So the first time that you make it, you do need to stretch in a couple hours, but the great thing is you store this dough in your fridge for up to two weeks, and you just tear off a piece for as large a loaf as you want to make in those two weeks in time you bake bread. So it's really a great thing. You only know, have to conceivably do it once um, every two weeks, so twice a month. Depending upon how much your family goes through it, if we're home a lot and we're eating a lot of bread, sometimes the batch of dough only lasts me a week, um, other times it's two weeks. So it's pretty much all stirred up here, and I just kind of go into the lump, and then I just break off the little last bit of it. So I'm going to show you, here's what it looks like. There's the dough. See, just kind of do it till it sticks together there. And then, the jams might get a little sticky. We're going to take our tea towel, and we're going to put this over top of the bread. This helps trap any warmth as the yeast is activating and working and the bread is rising. It creates a little bit of more warmth. We want to trap that in there to keep our rice really good. So we're going to cover this with our tea towel and set it in a draft-free warm area. For me, that happens to be the top of my fridge. So we're going to set it up there and we're going to let it rise for about three to four hours. Basically, you want it to rise all the way and then start to collapse so it gets to the top of the rise. And then after that, we're going to just pop it in the fridge. So I'm going to take off the thread after we chill it. And then we're going to break it. So you want to chill it for at least two hours. It doesn't do that. And it doesn't have to chill it while it's the air tight, but you do need a lid on your dough when it's in the fridge. So I just feel a little bit that kind of thing open to open it in. And we follow it here. So I'll have it in the bed. And so here is the dough, and then I'm going to put half of it tonight to do a specially large round work. So just loop it in, and stick it out. And I usually need about half, so I'm going back to go two ways. And then I'm just going to get the wet and sticky. So we're just going to keep pulling down until we have a nice, smooth, so you don't want to have it very long. It does get sticky if you just kind of melt it. So we have a nice dry spot like that. So we're going to put it on our tissue stone. You can see that. You put it on the middle of the stone like this. And then we are going to take a little bit more flour and put it on the surface of the ball. And then we're going to rub it on the surface. And the reason I'm doing this is you have to pass the top of the knife and the flour keeps getting nice and sticky to the dough. And the reason that we do this is so that it rises evenly, then it's baking, and then you get a nice pot. So we're going to put some fairly deep sauces in there on an inch tip. Now I'm just going to kind of make one. We do about four across the top here. All across the top. Okay. So I'm not sure it's going to all over. You'll see it, the more it rises, you'll see those flashes that kind of show there. So we're going to let this sit out at room temp for our oven is to use. And we're going to preheat our oven to 450 degrees. So it could stay hot, but because this is such a wet dough, you really can't overbake it. And then we can really set the up for you once that is heated and we can go in to bake. So we'll be back in a minute. Bake our bread. So we just let it sit out for about 20 minutes while our oven is preheated to 450 degrees. So we are going to put this in. And the next tip that I'm going to give you, which is a little bit different than baking normal bread, is we are going to have our boiler pan is down underneath the bread. So you see it in there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put in one cup of hot water. And that's the very hot water. And we are going to pour this into the broiler pan. So we're going to put this is the hottest so I can get my tap water. And put that one cup in. And then we're going to quickly shut the oven door. So that's the key there. Okay, we're going to quickly shut the oven door, and then we are going to let it cook for about 35 minutes. 
it out of the oven and cook for three minutes. And then you just want to put it on a larger rack. It's going to cook. And you can dry it. I forgot to explain. So you can see how those splash marks form the lines that you see in the bread. So that's how much it rises and opens up from that little ball. So there's the bread. I wish you could smell it. Um, for more modern homesteading tips and pioneering today's tips, you can go to melissaclinglaw.com. And thank you for watching.